you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, Illinois. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles, has made an appeal for unity while addressing the spring meeting of the bishops, which is taking place virtually from June 16th through the 18th. The Archbishop said only a united church can heal the, quote, brokenness and challenge the injustices in society. Quoting from the Pope's encyclical Fratelli Tutti, the prelate told his brother bishops that although the church is divine, its members are human and they are not immune to the pressures of division. Archbishop Gomez also reminded them that there are forces at work that undermine the unity of the human family and the truth about God's creation. The bishops will vote on several agendas, including two causes of canonization and the pastoral statements on the marriage ministry and the Eucharist in the life of the church. Schools in the U.S. state of Florida will have daily moments of silence from the next academic year, as Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a bill into law, making it mandatory. Before signing the bill, the governor said it is important to be able to provide students with the ability to reflect and pray. Although the bill does not mandate prayer in schools, DeSantis referred to religious terms during the signing. He also made it clear that one cannot push God out of every institution, as the Founding Fathers did not believe in that. The law mandates that teachers are prevented from making suggestions as to the nature of any daily reflection that a student may engage in during the moment of silence. Two churches in the Vancouver Archdiocese in Canada were vandalized over the weekend following the discovery of the remains of 215 indigenous children from the premises of a former school run by the church. On June 12, St. Augustine Church in Vancouver was vandalized with graffiti on the main door that read, quote, release the records and, quote, pillars. The following day, a pro-life memorial gravestone on the premises of St. Joseph's Church in Port Moody, which is 10 miles east of Vancouver, was found knocked to the ground on which the erected monument was broken. The pandemic crisis is intensifying in Brazil as the nation is about to witness the number of coronavirus infections reaching 500,000. In this grim scenario, the National Conference of Bishops of Brazil will offer prayers and tributes to those who died of COVID-19. A special mass will be celebrated in Rio de Janeiro tomorrow, June 19, and all churches across the nation will ring their bells at 3 p.m., which is designated as the Hour of Mercy. The Auxiliary Bishop of Rio de Janeiro, Monsignor Joel Portela Amado, who will be celebrating the Mass, said that the church is undertaking an act of solidarity and commitment. He said, quote, all the people who in some way have the slightest sensitivity to their hearts should stop and reflect at this moment. 500,000 is a symbolic number, but half a million people are still many. The Primate of Hungary, Cardinal Peter Erdo, has released the official song and video trailer of the upcoming Eucharistic Congress that will be held in Budapest in September. During the ceremony on Monday, June 14th, the Cardinal said the anthem is a remake of the official song of the 1938 Eucharistic Congress held in the Hungarian capital. East and west, the exaltation, sing the triumph of the Lord. This song composed by a Jesuit named Bila Banga is highly popular among Hungarian Catholics, was also sung during the 2019 Papal Mass in Chikshamyo. The background score is provided by the orchestra of the Opera House, and the anthem will have seven variations apart from the English version. So far, 2,700 volunteers have applied for the Eucharistic Congress that will be held from September 5th through the 12th of this year. An Italian priest who has authored more than 20 books and is a frequent guest in radio and television shows has been appointed as ecclesiastical assistant to the communications department of the Vatican. 
In his new role, Father Luigi Maria Epicoco of the Archdiocese of L'Aquila will also be a columnist for L'Osservatore Romano. Pope Francis has gifted Father Epicoco's book titled Someone to Look to for a Spirituality of Witness to members of the Curia during his Christmas speech in 2019. Father Epicoco also oversaw the publication of a book in Italian of the reflections of Pope Francis on Pope St. John Paul II. A native of Puglia in southern Italy, the priest is noted presence at conferences. He also leads retreats throughout the country. As euthanasia and assisted suicide becomes legal in Spain on June 25th, a group of young Catholics has launched a prayer campaign to end this outrage. Praying for the growth of a culture of life, the end to euthanasia worldwide, and the conversion of all souls, the prayer campaign titled, quote, One Week for Life, will be held from June 18th through the 25th. It was a talk on euthanasia by nurses that led this group of Madrid youth to undertake prayer and fasting to promote the sanctity of life. Organizers of the event said the law legalizing euthanasia was passed without taking inputs from healthcare professionals and is against the right to life contained in Article 15 of the Constitution. Even though doctors can put forward a conscientious objection, medical institutions cannot object to euthanasia or assisted suicide. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.